Hi guys, uh, thanks for joining me again. Uh, so this time we're back to making progress on the mini catering. Um, in the last video on the catering we made the front uprights, um, which obviously are going to be the steering uprights. So the next thing I'm going to make will be the steering rack, which I've, uh, I've done some uh, drawings for. And it will be um, a conventional steering rack, not like an RC rack. There will be a gear, and a sorry, a pinion and a rack. The pinion gear I've actually bought. So this part here will be my pinion gear. It's a really small gear. Um, it's, it's got a three mil hole through the middle, which will be where the steering rack. Uh, sorry, which will be where the steering column fixes to. Obviously, as well as steering, um, the rack will need to travel up and down with the suspension. So, at each end of the rack, there will be a small universal joint, again, which I bought, and again, that has a 3mm inside diameter. And then coming off uh, those universal joints, I've just got some um, M3 uh, threaded rods which I'll cut down and they will connect to what will effectively be my track rod ends, which are an M3 rod end connector, uh, female this time, not male like the previous ones. As you can see there, that will be my track rod end. So that'll give me adjustment as well, and I'll put a nut on there uh, to lock it in position once I'm happy with the tracking. So that's all the parts I've bought. So in this video there'll be some um, gear tooth teeth cutting to do on the rack to suit the pinion. I've measured the gear, and I believe it's uh, a module... Uh, 0.75 gear so I've done drawings for the rack base on that and I've ordered the gear cutter uh, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make the case for the rack um, and that's just going to be a um, bit of aluminium hollowed out um, and it'll hold the pinion in place in the correct uh, relation to the rack so we'll get that bit of aluminium cut, we'll get it in the millimachine, sorry, in the lathe um, and we'll get that turned down to the uh, drawing that I've produced here. Okay, so I've got the bit of aluminium bar set up in the lathe now. I've just marked that first line for the feature where it needs to turn up to. So the plan is to turn down two sections to 12mm diameter. Would be a bit of a body here which will stay at the same diameter as it is now. There'll be a section of this that will stay at this diameter as it is now and then later we'll transfer this part over into the milling machine and we'll do some work on that uh, remaining bit of material and that'll be where the pinion will be housed. Um, there'll be a bush to go in there for the pinion shaft um, and then the inside diameter will be made to suit um, again a bush to go in each end and then the rack itself will sit uh, within them bushes. So we'll get this part turned down to size to the drawings I've got and then we'll move on to the next operation which will be machining this part in the milling machine.
Okay, so I've now got that part uh, roughed out on the lathe. Uh, we've got the main body where the rack will sit uh, turned down and we've reamed down the centre of there. Next thing to do is to machine uh, this bulk here. Um, we're going to put in the mi miller machine next and we're going to square that up and that'll be where the pinion will be housed in there and uh, that'll be where the searing column will uh, later connect. There'll be some bushes as well to push in to each end so the rack will be sliding on some bronze bushes and also the pinion um, the shaft for the pinion it will be sat in a bronze bush as well so as I say square this up there's some holes to drill and uh, hopefully it will work out So there is the completed housing for the steering rack. Um, I've pushed the bronze bearings into each end of there and that's where the, the toothed rack will travel inside there. I don't know if you can see but in there I've uh, also pushed in the bearing that will carry the pinion and the gear can slide over there and then it'll be locked in with that grub screw so you can just see it in there so I've got a cover to make which are what these four holes are for that will hold the cover on and keep that pinion um, captive in there um, as I say there's a grub screw to go in there and eventually there'll be another universal joint on here which will be the uh, steering rack up to the steering wheel, sorry the steering column. Okay so the next thing I'm going to make is actually the toothed rack um, and that will be that will eventually sit inside uh, the housing and that's what will actually push the wheels in the direction that we need to turn and obviously the gear that goes in there um, that will turn or that will move the rack. So on this part we need to turn down a little bit on each end so we can so that we can connect the universal joints uh, to each end uh, and then we've obviously got some teeth to cut into the rack so for, first of all we'll get in the lathe we'll put those ends on and then uh, we'll cut the teeth So I just thought I'd show you the setup before I start. I've um, I've got my gear cutter in there. It's a module 0.75 gear cutter. It's the number one gear cutter for a rack, um, and I've got it in the uh, harbour there. So I've touched off on the top of the rack, rather than rely on the DRO for the Z axis. I've decided to use this indicator and I'm going to do that for each drop um, just because the teeth spacings are so um, small I think it's 1.83 mil between each one so I'll be using the dial indicator to measure that drop each time for the next cut so um, this probably isn't the best way to have it set up I've just got the 
uh, rod stood up in a V block I've got a bit, bit of material in there to get inside the V as well to clamp on there um, it's the best thing I've got to do it with at the moment I'm still collecting tools but with the limited tools I've got uh, this is the best setup I could come up with we'll see how it goes the other option I thought about is maybe making a bit of a strong back machining a groove up it and then clamping it in like that just so um, there's a bit of strength behind it but I'll see how this goes I've got plenty of material um, and it didn't really take a lot of work on the lathe to get it to where it is now so I'll see how this goes so lots of you were probably shouting at the screen because of my previous setup and uh, looking back now I don't know why I didn't see it coming but uh, I did completely wreck that part it's now scrap I should have uh, predicted it there was um, a lot more well there was a, there was a lot of vibration and it uh, completely ruined the part the part was uh, gone back and forward as each flute hit it and the spring back was then um, obviously causing a deeper a deeper cut so what I've done now is I've got a bit of scrap which I was practicing on when I first got this milling machine and it's got a shoulder cut in it just just over half the diameter of the bar I've added a little bit of a clamp in the top to keep that top secure and the bottom is clamped in against that shoulder by the vise so I think this will be a lot more rigid I've also slowed my cutting speed right down which I think was the other problem so I'm now at about 180 rpm and I'm just going to take it nice and easy So that's the uh, first one done so we've just got 28 more to do now so drop it down and uh, I'll get it cut I'll get you a few different angles of this operation as it progresses and then uh, I'll bring you back when it's done So after a bit of a sketchy start um, I eventually got my rack finished as you just saw me machining and uh, this has been the first bit of uh, gear tooth cutting I've done um, really happy with that so now we can uh, fit it up in the 
uh, casing we can put it in our searing rack case I don't know if you can see the teeth in there yeah so at the moment I've got the pinion I've got the uh, pinion on the bit of 3mm silver steel um, I haven't quit to length yet because I haven't worked out what length it needs to be but uh, we should be able to put it in there now and yeah it works look at that how cool is that I'm well happy with that Okay. So now we can put these ends on here and at the moment the screws have got they're a little bit long the um, locking screws This is uh, M1 so it's uh, extremely fiddly so as you can see uh, those screws uh, are a bit long at the moment so I'll probably uh, just take them down a little bit on the grinder you can see it's uh, attached well there It'll be one in each side so I'll probably just take it down to just over the length it needs to be to just lock on so those heads will be sitting quite close down onto the uh, universal joint it's also one to go on this other side so you can see they actually came with um, a little grub screw that's that black dot there don't know if you can see it but they're so tiny I don't have an allen key to go in it I might try and get one I would guess it's maybe a half mil allen key that I would need for that might have a look on eBay see if I can find one There's one on the other side, Let's see if we can find another M1 screw, let's try that one, it's a bit shorter, I've just got a selection of, um, it's a pack of 1000 M1, M2, M3, M4 and M5 screws, but when it was delivered the case was smashed, smashed to pieces, so they're all mixed together, so I might be able to find some more. There it is, I've um, got the universal joints fixed on each end there and just because I like how this has turned out so much I'm going to have a go with this again. <laughs> that is awesome. So the idea is that eventually um, this will connect to a rack um, there'll be some more universal joints to bring it up to where the steering wheel will be but somewhere along the rack I'll also put another gear in there and then that'll mesh in with a gear on a servo which will turn it but yeah I'm happy with that that's great So I've got some, I don't know if you can see it, I've got some M3 threaded bar which needs cut down 
idea is that I should be able to put I should be able to put a little M3 locking nut on there and then my track rod end or my rod end connector will thread on and I can put that nut back on there just to lock it in position so I'm going to work out what length I need to cut this at um, and then this will be what will fix into the other end of that universal joint on the steering rack um, so it will be locked into that end and then I'll have some adjustment this end So I'll cut that and then I'll bring you back when uh, when I've got that together. There we have it. Um, I think I'm going to call that the end of this part. Um, in the next part, um, I've done the drawings for the bracketry to hold this part to the chassis. So we'll get those made, and in the next video, we'll get this fitted to the car. Just thought I'll show you a few things that I've bought for the car, parts that I have bought rather than make. So this is a it's a radiator from a computer um, but it's quite a nice size um, I think it'll uh, work well with my car so that'll be the cooling radiator for the engine I've uh, also got some uh, ball bearings or bearings um, those ones and some smaller ones um, and these will be my wheel bearings uh, I've done the drawings for the front and rear hubs um, you can maybe uh, just make them out on uh, this this drawing here um, you can see on this drawing I've got the um, steering rack which we've just made and we've got the the front uprights which I've already fitted to the car um, and then we've got brake discs and we've got some hubs there so I've designed those hubs around these uh, small bearings so I'll have them to press into the hubs and then I'll have a small stub axle to make that will thread into the front uprights I was I did think about making the shock absorbers and I was speaking to somebody who had made their own shock absorbers for uh, their car, their RC car, but uh, they said it was a lot of work and so I decided um, just to buy them. So these were the best fit. I think I might have to make some little adapters or modify the wishbones ever so slightly. Uh, particularly on the front, uh, for example on the front wishbones there's a 6mm wide slot for the this part of the wishbone to sit into I think I need to open that out to 8mm to allow that to go in but that's all we're really talking about modifying so yeah, starting to make some progress um, I have bought a clutch 
but it's in the house so I don't have it here it's just a centrifugal clutch for now uh, what I've decided is I could go mad um, designing and making every single part for this car and it could take years to make so I thought it might be better to buy what parts I can for now we'll get it operational um, we'll get it working and then down the line we can maybe look at upgrading parts and uh, making it a bit more interesting in the future but for now I'm focusing on getting it put together um, I've still got the engine and gearbox to make and the diff um, prop shaft drive shaft to make so there's still a lot of work to do and um, I have got the lump of aluminium for the engine block as well um, but it's one of those parts where a lot could go wrong so I'm putting it off at the moment but eventually I'm going to have to do it anyway I hope you enjoyed that video I'm certainly very happy with how that steering rack has turned out so thanks for watching this video thanks for joining us if you haven't already done so please uh, subscribe um, like press that like button if you enjoy this video and comment down below if you have any ideas or tips and uh, also if you hit that bell symbol you'll get notifications when I next upload a video so thanks for joining us and I'll see you next time